Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk, and today we need to talk about what may be a sensitive subject. So try to relax yourself, breathe in, breathe out. Okay, are you relaxed now? Here we go. We need to talk about your MOSFETs. I know, I know, they just aren't doing what you need anymore. Sure, they may have been fine before, but with all of today's stresses, your poor little FET really isn't cutting it. Don't worry, help is here. My guest today is Mike Speed from Fairchild Semiconductor, and we're going to talk about getting you a better MOSFET. Things are looking up, my friends. Before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out even more information about Fairchild Semiconductor's new Power Trench MOSFETs. Hi, Mike. Thank you so much for joining me today. Yeah, thank you, Amelia, for inviting us here today. So, those of us designing power supplies are facing a lot of challenges today, including tighter constraints on efficiency and size. So let's talk about your new MOSFETs and, and how you're going to help me with this. Sure. So this new 100-volt MOSFET technology that Fairchild is releasing, it has much lower RDS on and QG, as typically from other suppliers as they come to market. These are the two parameters that are typically focused on. Okay. But today we're releasing a technology that also covers the body diode, customer pain. The body diode tends to ring and be snappy, so engineers have to snubber this with some capacitor resistor network or has to use a higher breakdown voltage MOSFET. Okay. So this new 100 volt technology has a much improved body diode as well as the typical improvement in uh, efficiency from the RDS on and gate charge. Okay. So this is obviously not Fairchild's first rodeo in MOSFETs. Walk me through the history of Fairchild and MOSFETs. So this 100-volt MOSFET progression, yeah, it's been going on for about 15 years now. Wow. And you can see from our technology here that the figure of merit has been improving by um, a factor of two from generation to generation. Okay. And this has also happened with a new part, FTMS 86181. All right, so let's look under the hood of this bad boy. Oh, what makes it special, Mike? How do I get this body diode improvement? I certainly need some body diode improvement myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we think we're about a 50% lower QRR than any other competitor on the market today. Wow. So a significant improvement. As you look here, the red is the new technology, the FTMS 86181 from Fairchild. Okay. And you can see the lower ringing of the red here, where there's a V-bus voltage there of 50 volts, and this switching factor does not even reach the 50 volts, so it's very well suppressed. The black here is showing our previous technology from okay. Fairchild. And then the other colors are the other leading MOSFET suppliers in the market today. So this has not really been addressed in the past. Fairchild, we believe, is the first to really tackle with the body diode problem. Excellent. So on the right-hand side, you can see, again in the red color, the much improved faster reverse recovery. So this is also another important feature and can reduce the switching loss in such an application as a power supply. Okay. So you mentioned earlier that efficiency has improved. Tell me more about that. So the efficiency, again, in red here is improved over the whole load range. Okay. And we break that down with the bar chart here in the bottom right-hand corner. So this is from some simulated data of a synchronous rectifier in the secondary of an isolated DC to DC. Okay. And you can see in the competitor one application that the red, the RDS on, is actually lower in this part. Uh -huh. But you can see that the overall power loss is actually less with the FTMS 86181. And the big contributor of that is the much lower reverse recovery charge, what's known as QRR. Okay. So, Mike, what kind of applications would this be really good for? The application we're showing here is a mid-voltage synchronous buck with a 48 volt in. Okay. And what we do here to compare the technologies of both Fairchild and competitors is we keep the Q1, the high side device, the same. We use Fairchild for both Q1. But Q2, one has Fairchild used, and on the second equivalent board, we use a competitor's device. Okay. 
With this synchronous back converter, we compare the efficiency, the thermals, and the overshoot in application. And what kind of practical results are we seeing here? In this picture, we're showing the low side turnoff waveform. So this is the switch node. Okay. And you can see here that the peak voltage of the low side, comparing the competitor with the Fairchild device, we're over 12 volts less peak voltage. So a significant reduction. And what this helps to do is reduce the snubbing needed. Maybe no snubber will be needed at all. The EMI generated is certainly less. And then you could also consider using an improved derating using the Fairchild device. For example, if a 20% derating is used on the MOSFET technology, the guard band that will be needed for the competitor device is 112 volts. Okay. Therefore, you'd need a 120 volt or even a 150 volt rated MOSFET. Sure. So the implication there is that you'd have a higher RDS on because of the higher breakdown voltage, causing lower efficiency and potentially higher cost. So with the Fairchild part, using the same derating, it would be within the 100 volt rating, an actual value of 96 volts. So this is a major advantage of the Fairchild solution. Sure. So, Mike, let's look at the efficiency in this case. In this particular application, the efficiency and power loss is shown here. And you can see that the power loss reduction is around 3.7 watts. So again, very significant. Yeah. And then the efficiency, a boost of certainly well over 1%. So this has real advantages in both power supply and motor control type applications as well. Okay. Where efficiency and power density is very important. All right, so what's the thermal story here? So the thermal story is very interesting here because even though we're only changing the low side device, it actually has an implication thermally for the high side device. Huh, okay. When you look at the right hand side, this is using Fairchild both on the high side and the low side. You can see that there's a significant temperature reduction and the high side device stays at around 61 degrees. In exactly the same conditions with the competitor device, the low side device is running hotter because mm -hmm. of the poorer body diode. But also the high side device, you can see that has also been increased in temperature. And this is because of the body diode of the low side has an effect on the performance of the high side. Ah, okay. This is very typical in a mid-voltage synchronous buck type application and is a real pain point for the customer. Absolutely. So, Mike, can you recap your main points for me? So, yes, to summarize, we have a 47.5% RDS on reduction with our new technology. So, very significant there. We've improved that switching figure of merit of both RDS on and gate charge from our previous technology by 43%. We now have a best-in-class body diode performance. This reduces overshoot and that can improve EMI compliance and reduce the MOSFET voltage derating. These MOSFET features also enhance overall system efficiency and boost the power density. So expect to see further product launches from Fairchild in this 100 volt series in the future and with other voltage nodes to come. So thanks for the opportunity to present this major advance in mid-voltage MOSFET technology today. Well, you're quite welcome, Mike. Thank you so much for joining me today. And before we go, don't forget to click that link. There you can find out more information about Fairchild Semiconductor's new Power Trench MOSFETs. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, check out our YouTube channel, keyword EE Journal, or head on over to the on-demand section of eejournal.com.